is we do not want to permute all of the letters or the numbers or the elements we are given. Sometimes we might just want to permute some of them. Let's take a look at example in this video and then we'll delve deeper into permutations throughout this lecture. All right, so in this example we have how many four letter words can you make with the letters A through F with no repeated letters? Okay, so let's solve this problem together. Well, there are four letters here that we're choosing, and we're using A through F. So our set here that we're picking from is A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we want to permute through four of these letters. Not all of them, but four of them. So let's start with the first letter. What can we pick for the first letter? Well, we have a total of six options for this first letter. We can pick A, B, C, D, E, F, which is six options. So there are six possibilities for the first one. But then once we pick one, then we have only five options left. And so for the second letter, we have five options to choose from. And then for the third letter, we have four options to choose from. And then the last one, we have three options. And by the multiplicative property, we multiply all these to get the total number of permutations. So we're not permuting through the entire um, set here. We're only permuting through four out of the six objects here. So in this case, it would have been something like B, E, F, C or something like that. Who knows? But there are six times five times four times three ways of permuting four of these six objects. In general, we can ask how many permutations exist of K objects choosing those objects from a larger collection of N objects. In the example we just did, K is four and N is six. We write this number as P and K, where in this example, this was P six, four. And sometimes we call it a K permutation of N elements. From this example, we see that to compute P and K, we must apply the multiplicative principle to K numbers, starting with N and counting backwards. So we start with six and we count backwards. For example, P 10, four would be 10, times nine, times eight, times seven, stop. There's four objects here that we're picking from 10. Notice again that P10-4 starts out looking like 10 factorial, but we stop after seven. We can formally account for this stopping by dividing away the part of the factorial that we don't want. So we can actually say that this is the same thing as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. They're very similar, but we want to stop at 7. So we're going to divide away the leftover junk that we don't need. It's mainly 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 so that these terms cancel and we're left with 10 times eight, nine times eight times seven and then stopping. So that's another way of representing this. And it's important that we represent it this way because we can actually later develop a formula. Now careful, the factorial in the denominator is not four factorial. There are four objects, but the, the denominator here is not four factorial, but it's rather 10 minus four factorial, which is six factorial. Now let's take a look at one more thing here that's really important. So this means that K permutations of an element set P and K is the number of K permutations of N elements, the number of ways to arrange K objects chosen from N distinct objects. But this is the big 
closed formula for P and K. It's just N factorial divided by N minus K factorial, which is just N times N minus one times N minus two times N minus three, all the way down to N minus K minus one. All right, note that when N equals K, we have that, let me write here. Actually, let me erase all of this and I'm actually gonna move this out of here. All right, so, oops, and now I made a mess, but I'm gonna clean it up. There we go. All right, so this means that PNN equals N factorial divided by N minus N factorial, which equals N factorial. <laughs> Since we defined zero factorial to be one, if you remember. Now this makes sense. We already know N factorial gives the number of permutations of all N objects. So this formula in fact works for values of N and K. Anyways, thanks everyone. And I'll see you in the next video.